MetaConnect 2022, Meta's annual virtual reality developers conference, took place in Meta's Horizon Worlds. Hey everyone, and welcome to Connect. If there was any doubt about Meta's commitment to building out the metaverse, Mark Zuckerberg laid out the company's plan in his choreographed keynote address. We believe in this vision so deeply that we renamed our whole company after it. And we're in a moment now when a lot of the technologies that will power the metaverse are starting to take off. He unveiled the new Quest Pro VR headset, highlighted Meta's push into the workplace, and showed off Meta's next-gen avatars with, wait for it, legs. He also gave us a glimpse into the tech Meta's developing for the future metaverse. So without further ado, let's get into the biggest announcements at this year's Meta Connect. We finally got to see the new Quest Pro headset, which was teased last year as Project Cambria. This is Meta Quest Pro. Meta's next generation headset is the first to have built-in mixed reality features. The Quest Pro sports lenses that are 40% thinner than the Quest 2 with LCD displays that allow for more pixels and sharper visuals. It delivers more expression and a deeper feeling of connection than any other technology. With mixed reality built in, it lets you do things that just haven't even been possible before. It's all in a beautiful design that's comfortable to wear. Unlike previous VR headsets, the Quest Pro allows you to see both your physical and VR environments at the same time. That's a noticeable improvement for more clumsy VR users like me. With the Quest Pro's open peripheral features, you're less likely to trip and fall, either in the virtual world or in the real one, or both. But if you really enjoy the fully immersive experience, don't worry. You can turn on the headset's magnetic light blockers to lock into the virtual world. The Quest Pro's Touch Pro controllers have 3D space sensors that use your hands to map a mixed reality environment, separate from the headset, with better haptic feedback. You can also add a stylus tip to the controllers if you want to design or write anything in the metaverse. Zuckerberg's keynote also made it clear that Meta is pushing the Quest Pro as a device people can use to interact with other people in the metaverse using mixed reality. Using high-res cameras to capture pixels, Zuckerberg claims physical objects are also accessible in the metaverse with the Quest Pro headset. But Meta Connect didn't do a great job of showcasing this feature. There was a part of the headset demo where two people were in the same room wearing Quest Pros, but only interacting with each other in the metaverse. At one point, we see the woman take a bite of toast in her physical space, which in the metaverse looked like she was eating the air. Wait, what are you doing? I'm eating toast. I'm really hungry. Funny, but also kind of weird. Not the best example of the VR headset's mixed reality capabilities. At $1,500, the Quest Pro is much more expensive than Meta's previous $500 Quest 2 headset, on par with the HTC Vive headsets from Dell, but much cheaper than Microsoft's 3300 HoloLens or Magic Leap's 2300 VR headset. Not exactly consumer-friendly price either. Zuckerberg didn't explicitly say it, but it seems like the Quest Pro was designed as a device for companies using the headset in virtual workspaces rather than consumers at home. Speaking of work, Meta is partnering with Microsoft and Zoom, so users can join these platforms in the metaverse, like Zoom's breakout rooms and Microsoft Teams. As in-person work ramps up, we want everyone to have the ability to feel like they're present, even if they're not physically there. It's also partnering with Spark AR to develop mixed reality tools so companies can review 3D products in virtual workspaces. Meta's new Quest Pro headset also enables gaming in mixed reality. Meta showed how gamers can play the popular VR game Beat Saber in their physical space. Meta Connect announced games like Marvel's anticipated Iron Man VR and Among Us VR, available in November, with pre-orders open now. For zombie lovers, Retribution, Skydance's next chapter in the Walking Dead series, will be out later this year. Guess you ain't the only one who thrives on creating havoc. Behemoth, another VR game from Skydance, will be available in 2023. Besides games, Meta is bringing more entertainment content to Horizon Worlds. The company is partnering with NBC Universal to develop select content like The Office, Universal Monsters, DreamWorks, and more in Horizon Worlds and at Universal's theme parks in 2023. Meta also announced plans to develop opportunities for users to create personal spaces, like your home, in the Horizon Worlds app. 
Meta also revealed some updates to its AR hardware, continuing their partnership with Essilor Luxottica to create Ray-Ban Stories, Meta's first ever smart glasses, teased last year. With the new Ray-Ban Stories, wearers can take photos and videos, share content on social media, listen to music on Spotify, and answer phone calls. Zuckerberg says Meta is developing text features for hands-free connectivity, adding transition lenses, and creating a portal to access the metaverse. But those are multi-year projects, so don't expect them anytime soon. Zuckerberg also revealed Meta's next-generation avatars in Horizon Worlds, walking into the virtual room on two legs, something we haven't seen before in the metaverse. Zuckerberg admits avatar legs take a lot of work to generate and match the avatar's top half, but will be a feature in, wait for it, 2023. Besides Zuckerberg's avatar legs, Meta announced that you can now sync your avatar across all of Meta's apps, instead of creating new ones for each individual experience. So Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, and WhatsApp are all getting these updates. That's a big step in creating continuity throughout the metaverse, a common complaint amongst VR users. Meta's next-gen avatars also allow for more customizable features, especially when it comes to inclusivity. Users can now choose between different body types, adding disability accessories like wheelchairs and hearing aids, plus a variety of skin tones. Users can also shop for digital clothes for their avatar, as more retailers open virtual stores in the metaverse. Speaking for myself, I'm not sure I'm willing to invest in a digital outfit for my avatar unless I can also wear it in real life. Or maybe I just don't want to spend the money on something only my avatar gets to wear. Something to think about, Mark. Arguably, the coolest part of MetaConnect 2022 was a headset that Zuckerberg didn't show on video, but still demonstrated how, simply by using motor neuron signals, users could check and respond to messages or take photos. But we have working demos of this stuff and it's pretty mind-blowing. The electromyography prototype, or EMG for short, is still in the research and development phase. But Zuckerberg showed how EMG has the potential for gaming, helping people with visual or hearing impairments better navigate their environment, and combining individuals and AI for a human-machine interactivity in the metaverse. So that was a quick roundup of the things announced at this year's MetaConnect. Be sure to check out Scott Stein's hands-on demo of the Quest Pro, as well as a few demos of other products announced. But what did you think about MetaConnect? What caught your attention? Personally, I found the EMG most interesting. I think it has tons of implications for AI learning, science, even architecture. Leave a comment below and remember to like this video. Thanks for watching.